so welcome to today's class which is lecture 2 so in the last class we kind of learned about what is continuum mechanics we saw that it covers both solids as well as fluids okay and it's a continuum viewpoint of the material or macroscopic viewpoint in which whenever you see a physical object it looks like a continuous object there's no void okay then we were also thinking of uh, how to represent different particles in the continuum body all right so anyway that was the starting class or introductory class so from today actually we are going to really start the topics so whatever i discussed today is actually from chapter one of the reference book okay and there are some key concepts which we should get familiar before we get into the topic okay i'll just list them it is also listed in that book by the way so the notions of a body what do we mean when we say a body then configuration of a body okay so we'll elaborate each of these points then what we have is called reference configuration of a body this is something i was trying to get on tomorrow then the region occupied by a body Then the particle of the continuum. Okay. Sometimes we also say it to be the material point. Then the location of the particle in some configuration. Then what do we mean by deformation of the body? Then the motion of the body. Then very important topics, which is called Eulerian and Lagrangian description. of any physical quantity okay similarly you have eulerian and lagrangian derivatives okay which could be both spatial as well as time derivatives Okay, so we'll try to understand each of this, these points one by one today. Okay, the first thing is about, you know, the body. What do you mean when we say body in continuous mechanics? Okay. So, you know, we use this term body. So that's the definition in continuum mechanics. And, you know, we should all speak in the same language. Therefore, it is important to know what everybody thinks of. Otherwise, different people will interpret differently. Right. So whenever you see the term body, it usually means mathematical abstraction.
of a physical object okay and it is composed of various particles it is composed of various particles which are also called material points okay so these are the two points which can tell what is the meaning of a body see any physical object or a body a physical body and this body here they are not the same okay so let me say a physical object suppose you know this is uh, or let's say the human finger okay so it has so many structures right it has uh, the outer skin then it has bones within even in the bone it has a uh, hard outer layer then inner soft layer you go further down you start seeing collagen in the bone you go further down you start seeing atoms so a physical object is really complex right it has various structures at different scales but the body here in continuum mechanics it's the mathematical abstraction of this physical object and in this mathematical abstraction in continuum mechanics when we say a body it is composed of particles okay it's a continuum body so it may have the same shape as the actual physical object and it is simply composed of particles which are distributed continuously okay and what are these particles which uh, is also called material points or material particles so these particles are supposed to represent the actual constituent of the body but they are not really the actual con constituents or stating differently they are not for example the atoms of the body it can the these continuum particles can represent group of atoms in the actual body okay in the actual physical body only then we can think that the this continuum body has got no voids if you start uh, at a detailed if you take a detailed viewpoint wherein you are taking all the atoms then you have voids or gaps between atoms but in this continuum description as i told you yesterday there is no gap it's a continuous dis distribution of particles okay so i hope you are clear about the meaning of body so body is just a mathematical abstraction of the actual physical object and it is composed of particles which we also call material particles so material points okay so that covers our first point here and also this particle then what is the meaning of configuration of a body so you know when we say configuration then each of these particles you know it occupies 
some position in the space, right? In the physical space, these continuum particles occupy some position in the actual physical space. And that's the configuration of the body. Okay. So what we say that in a given configuration, of the body, each particle is located at some definite point, okay, let's say y, and it's of course a vector, right? in the three dimensional space so understand that body is just a mathematical abstraction of the actual physical object it is just to denote that we have those set of particles okay it need not have the same shape as the actual physical body so when we say body it is just a collection of particles of all the particles of this, of our continuum physical body okay it is just the collection of the particles And then each of the particles, you can map it to its actual position that it occupies in a configuration, right? Each of the particle will be located at some unique position in the three-dimensional space, right? And that is the configuration of the body. So the body itself, body need not, or actually it has no shape also, you can say, because it is just a collection of particles. It is just the collection of particles. So you can say it is particle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, likewise. It is just the collection of particles. Then each of the particles, you map it to its actual location in the 3D space. And then what you get is the configuration. OK. So mathematically, I'll say this y for each of the particles. And let us denote the particles by p, OK? where this p is an element of the body which i denote by b okay so the body will be denoted by b okay so this y for each of the particles okay so for all p in the body that gives you the configuration and the space occupied by this configuration the space occupied by the configuration that is called the region okay so 
so we see it's, it's the region r occupied by the body so the region and the configuration they are not the same let me emphasize this region and configuration are not the same why is it so you know just think of a cylindrical body okay and suppose it is taking this particular configuration straight cylinder and let's twist it about its axis so when you twist a cylinder about its axis the space occupied by the cylinder is not changing right it's the same space so therefore the region is still the same although you have twisted the cylinder the region is still the same but the particles are now not at the same location right after twisting a particle has gone to a different location so this y for a given particle has changed and therefore the configuration has changed but the region occupied is still the same okay so i hope you are clear about the difference between configuration and region so i'll just write here upon twisting a cylinder the region r occupied by the body does not change but the configuration changes because configuration is the map of each of the particles to its actual location in the 3d space okay so there is no question till now so as i have told you you are free to ask questions you have to just write in the chat window so we have covered configuration and then we have also covered region okay and then we also saw this location also no okay um so to make it a bit more precise you know about this configuration so we can write that the location of a particle denoted by y okay that is equal to some function which in the book it calls it psi okay it's a vector function of and what the argument is the material particle p so you pass to this vector function each of the particles from the body and the output is the location of that particle okay so here p is from the body and y is then in the region occupied by the body right so it must be a point in the region occupied by the body so i'm trying to use also the same notation so you don't have a problem when you go and read the reference book okay and this mapping or this function
this is called the configuration of the body okay and the output that's the location of particle individual particles okay and input is the particle or what what we said earlier also the material point okay pictorially you can write it as see i'm trying to go quite slow but we'll pick it up in you know few lectures so pictorially we can say that this is the abstract body which did not have the shape of the actual physical object okay it is just the collection of particles you can put it in whatever way you want it is just the collection of particles set of particles mathematical entity and any particle let us say p here that is getting mapped to its actual location y in the region occupied by the body okay so this thing here is the it has the actual shape of the body also actual shape and size of the body in a given configuration okay and this map which we denote by y equal to this function j of p so this mapping is uh, the configuration okay and you see that because it's a one to one map you know every particle has got a unique position you can therefore also construct a inverse mapping isn't it going the other way which would be this particle p is equal to some inverse function and the input is y from the region occupied by the body isn't it note that this inverse function it's a scalar function it's a scalar whereas this is a vector function because what comes out of this function is a vector so i hope that it is clear to everyone so far yeah so i see that there are some questions so how configuration will change so you know when you deform the body the configuration will change right because particles go to different location and that's why the configuration changes then sachin is asking can you ex again explain region and configuration so yeah so region is the space occupied by the body and configuration is this mapping and i gave you an example of you know, the twisting of a cylinder when you twist a cylinder the region occupied by the cylinder is still the same it's the same space in which the cylinder remains but the individual particles they go to different positions right so this mapping will therefore change and therefore the configuration changes is it okay sachin then saurabh says y belongs to the configuration of the body so y itself 
is the location of the particle okay y itself is the location of the particle the configuration this mapping is called the configuration okay this mapping j that's the configuration then uh, we have the question can we say that the position vector of any point is called configuration see position vector of a point is just the location of that particle right of that point the configuration again is this mapping to which when you input the particle out comes the location of the particle why the inverse function of the configuration is a scalar because when you take the inverse it has to give you just the particle right and particles you can think that they are scalars particles you have a collection of particles let us say each particle you give some number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so for to corresponding to every y it will have a particle right let us say particle number 5 or particle number 6 which will be present at that position y so the inverse function gives you the identity of that particle and therefore it's a scalar function is there any relationship between outline of the mathematical body and the actual body no there is no relationship the mathematical body as i said it's just a collection of particles so in that sense actually it's not even having any shape it's just a collection of particles inverse mapping means actual configuration to particle well the inverse mapping the input to the inverse mapping is the location of the particle and output of the inverse mapping is the identity of that particle what the vector mapping function be time dependent of course it will be which we will see later on so this mapping function or the configuration j it's not just a function of particle but also time t which we will see later on okay so let's proceed further in the meantime you can keep typing questions all right so having learned these things you, you can see from your above list what is remaining is for example the reference configuration so we know what is configuration then there is something called reference configuration Okay. So you see, in order to identify a particle of the body, we have to label the particles, right? And this labeling, this uh, scalar p, it's quite mathematical. It's not, uh, you know, it's abstract. It's not physical. isn't it so a particle we are giving some numbers 1 2 3 4 so it's just a mathematical representation it is not very physical so is there a way to label particles in a more physical way okay so that's where this concept of reference configuration comes into picture and reference configuration as the name suggests it's the reference configuration so, so you this will be like a reference and actually the position of the particle in the reference configuration is used to identify particles in a physical way see as of now we are identifying particles in a abstract way 
just p right one two three four five six but suppose let me draw a picture here so here is your body which is a collection of particles you have p here and then just think of a configuration which we'll call reference configuration and each of the particles are then mapped here and we'll call it by x okay so this mapping is x equal to the mapping function j ref okay of the particle p so with this you can uniquely uh, have a relationship between x and p isn't it so instead of identifying particles by number you can now identify particles by the location by its location in the reference configuration so let me just write it here one can now identify individual particles by its location in the reference configuration. Okay. And this configuration is usually, you know, usually it could be any of these. It could be either the stress-free configuration of the body stress-free configuration of the body so that's the configuration which a physical object attains when you uh, when you remove all the external load that acts on it okay and therefore what you get is a stress-free configuration Or it could be the configuration of the body at time t equal to zero. One of you already said no, that shouldn't the configuration be also dependent on time? So yes. So the reference configuration could also be the configuration of the body at t equal to zero. Or it could be any I mean, it is up to us. We can choose it to be anything we like. Or it could be any configuration which, say, is not complex. Not complex. Now, for example, think of a paper, a flat piece of paper. Suppose you take it in your hand and just crumble it. So it, it becomes something like this, isn't it? And then this crumbled shape is actually the reference configuration, right? When you throw it, it retains that shape, isn't it? So this is the plain paper and this is the crumbled stress-free you can say it's also stress-free because when you remove all the forces from it it, it it remains in this shape but you see this crumbled shape is quite complicated it is not 
a simple configuration. So often you can take the reference configuration to be this paper, the plain form of the paper itself. This could be the reference configuration instead of the crumbled shape. Okay. Let me see, do we have some question? Yeah, so in actual configuration, we are mapping to actual body, but in reference configuration, we are mapping to any reference. Yes, you're right. So in the reference configuration, we are mapping to some reference configuration or reference state of the body, which could be the state at t equal to zero or the state occupied by the body in its stress-free configuration. What is the physical significance of P? So it's, as I told you, it's just an abstract or mathematical way to identify particles. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's, it is just to identify particles, that is it. But it's abstract way. And this, uh, the position of that particle in the reference configuration, that is more physical, no? We can say that, okay, the body, the, the particle is located wherever the particle is located in the reference configuration. So that location can be used to identify individual particles. So that is a more physical way to identify particles. Okay. Now, Akash Deep says, sir, for reference configuration, whether we will have to take two time frames. So I don't understand this question. You don't have to take two time frames. Is there any relationship between the reference configuration and region R? Okay, that's a good question. See, the region R is the space occupied by the body in any configuration. And therefore, the space occupied by the body in the reference configuration is simply the reference region. So we can say that this space is R ref. Okay, so that's also the region, but the reference region. All right. So this is the reference configuration. And then you have the let us say what we call the actual configuration. So which could be something like this. And this is again, since it's a configuration, there has to have a map, right? So each particle is going to its actual or current location, which we denote by Y. Okay. And this mapping here is Y equal to simply the reference map without the subscript ref. Isn't it? So somebody is asking, this means reference configuration is like a standard region. Yeah, you can say that. Or as I have also said, it's it's sometimes also taken to be the configuration at t equal to zero initial time, or the stress-free configuration. All right. Okay. So on the left you have the reference configuration. On the right you have the actual configuration, okay? So you can say it's the actual configuration. And due to the presence of the two mapping here, Jai ref and the Jai itself, one can also relate X to Y, isn't it? So because of these two individual mappings, it also induces another mapping relating 
x to y and let us see what could that map be so mathematically we have y equal to this mapping function j of each of the particles p from the body but then we also know that this particle p is also going to reference position x no so therefore there is a inverse mapping also present here which is j ref inverse isn't it so can we not instead of p can we not write j ref inverse of x so this whole thing inside that's your p isn't it and this means we can think of another function y you know it's a vector function by the way y and I, i'll denote it with a hat to denote that it's a function y hat of the position of the particle in the reference configuration so you see it's a direct map now relating the particle the position of a particle in the reference configuration to the position of the particle in the actual configuration so with this mapping we can actually also forget about the this body the this abstract mathematical body we can also forget about this once we see that there is a direct mapping from the reference configuration to the actual configuration isn't it so let me write it again here or maybe in the picture also so this mapping here this is that y hat okay and that's a function of the position of the particle in the reference configuration okay and if i write it here now this y is equal to y hat of x so it is such that x is an element of the reference region isn't it reference region whereas y is an element of the region itself the current region okay so deep sikha is asking since at t equal to 0 we say that the configuration is the reference configuration but in the paper example initially the paper was plain so that should be taken as reference configuration so why we have taken the crumbled paper as reference see i am not saying that the configuration at t equal to 0 has to be the reference configuration that is up to you what do you want you can take it either of them either the configuration at t equal to 0 or a configuration at t equal to 5 seconds or a configuration at t equal to minus 10 seconds or it could be any configuration which is not even attained by the body during its motion it is just a reference configuration okay it does not have to be the configuration at t equal to 0 but usually it is taken to be the configuration of t equal to 0 or the stress free configuration usually but it need not be okay yeah then connection between actual and reference configuration so reference configuration configuration is just 
you know, for reference purpose, there is another reason why we have reference configuration, which I'll come to it. As I said to you, know, the first reason is we want to identify particles in a more physical way. And that is the reason why we have this reference configuration, because every particle has got a unique location in the reference configuration. And the location in the reference configuration can be then used to identify particles. It is more physical way. Okay. And uh, the other reason why we have reference configuration. Do you guys, for example, um, I mean, let me give you this example. So you have, you must have seen this, that you have a bar then you pull it and it's elongates, isn't it? And when we are asked to find out how much is the strain, the, let us say, longitudinal strain in the bar, we will say the current length minus the original length divided by the original length, right? So you see, when we define a strain in this way, what we require is the length of the body in the current configuration and also in the original configuration. So two configurations are always required. And the change is measured relative to the original configuration. Now this original configuration is actually the reference configuration. So this is actually the reference configuration, which as I told you, in a more general setting, need not be the configuration in the stress-free configuration. It could be any arbitrary configuration, but it has to be chosen by the person whosoever is solving it. But basically, reference configurations are used to measure strains relative to it. Any change in the geometry of the body can be measured relative to the reference configuration. So that's the another reason to have reference configuration. Yeah, reference configuration can also be used to measure change with respect to time. Reference region and actual region both are same? No, the reference region is unique whereas the actual region can be changing with time. Right? If you look at this picture, the left one, this is the reference region, and the right one, that's the actual region. So they are not the same. As the body deforms, the actual region changes, whereas the reference region remains the same. Reference region does not change when the body deforms because it is some fixed configuration of the body, reference configuration. Okay, so reference configuration does not change when the body is deforming. It's the actual configuration which is changing. Okay, I think I should stop here because it's already 8.54. But you can ask me more questions, okay? We'll continue from here in the next class.